So in today's video, we're going to walk through setting up and configuring Plex on your QNAP NAS unit, as well as testing the performance to see what you can expect from it. If you haven't already done so, then please subscribe and hit that notifications icon. I will let you know when there's new content and it really does help the channel. I've always been a long time Plex user, but I've always run Plex on either a Windows PC, a VM, or more recently on my Unraid server. And all three of these devices were capable of multi-transcoded streams pretty easily. What I want to show today is how you can take advantage of most NAS units and set up a Plex server in your own house for movies and photos. We got a lot of things to cover today, so let's just jump right into it. Before we jump into the configuration, I did want to point out a couple things. First is hardware decoding. To use hardware decoding, as you'll see here, you'll need to have a Plex Pass and your CPU has to support it. So you'll need to check out whether or not your CPU supports hardware encoding. Most of the Intel CPUs do, but you'll have to double check you for your particular model. It certainly does mean you can't use Plex. It only means you'll be using software decoding, which has a significant impact on performance. So you might not be able to do as many streams. Um, and you'll be probably limited to a smaller file format. On this test NAS, I'm using a Celeron dual core 3865U CPU with eight gigs of RAM. You don't really need eight gigs of RAM. That's just what I ended up putting in from the, from the day I bought it. But I would recommend slightly more than the minimum that comes with your device just to give it a little bit of breathing room. This is not a lightweight application and it does have to index movies and so on. So you wanna give it a little bit of breathing room. And the last thing I wanna mention before we get into it is location. Um, when I go through the installation here, I'll be installing it on my standard volume, which is where the rest of my applications are. However, if you do have an SSD partition or an SSD drive in your system, um, you might want to consider installing Plex there. It will run better and faster because it does do quite a bit of indexing and temp files. It helps to have that go to an SSD versus a physical drive. Okay, with that in mind, let's get started. So the first thing you're going to want to do is actually install the app. So you can actually get it from the App Center. And so let's go ahead and install it real quick. Again, you're going to put this or install this in the volume of your choice. I typically leave all my applications on data volume one. This may be one where you might, if you have an SSD pool, you might want to put it there as well. It's totally up to you. It doesn't really make much difference. So let's leave it where it is. I'm going to go hit OK and we'll wait a little bit till it installs. OK, looks like it's up and running. So before we actually launch it though, we do it would be in your best interest to actually create your media folders first. So let's take a quick look at the file station. I've already set up a couple. So here I've installed them. I've created them on my larger of the three volumes that I have because I have uh, almost nine terabytes on that volume. So I'm going to go ahead and put my media there. Now what I did is I created several folders. I created movies and I created MP4s. And we'll talk about some advantages of both here. And we'll see what kind of impact it has on performance. So now that we have our folders created, let's go ahead and finish up the setup. Okay, so now that, that it's installed, we have our, our media copied in. Let's go ahead and run it for the first time. Now, it just assumes you have a Plex account already. So if you don't, you know, you'll need to create one and create a user. Um, I obviously have a couple of accounts already. I'm going to go ahead and use mine and gives me some startup information. And here it's going to walk us through the setup. Now there's a couple things that I normally do. First of all, I'm running more than one Plex server. And second of all, um, I, this whole thing with trying to configure my routers just never worked. So I don't bother with checking this on. I will, nothing's going to work until I create a port forward rule. And we'll talk more about that a little bit later. So I'm going to just give it a, uh, name here just for testing purposes i'm going to uncheck allow me to access media outside my home and again this is more of a upnp thing so it's going to try to configure itself 
it's not going to work. So I don't bother getting it, trying to get it stuck. I just uncheck this box. I'll do the whole configuration and I'll go ahead and enable the, after I create my port forward rules, um, I can go ahead and enable outside access. So let's hit next. Okay, so here it wants me to add media library. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Click on add library. And the first thing I'll do is create a movies folder. I'm going to call it MKVs. Hit next. Browse. Now this is where it gets a little strange because if you have multiple volumes on your device, they actually show up as um, this. So you'll see um, basically volume one, two, and three. Or I have all my stuff in number two which is the unencrypted larger of volumes so i'm going to go there and i'm going to pick movies which happen to be mkvs hit add and add library so i've got my first library there let's add one more so i'm going to click on movies again this time i'm going to call it mp4s next browse same location, I have mp4 files, and I'm going to click add, add. So I now I have two library files, so I'm going to go ahead and hit next. It's going to tell me about the server setup, we're all set. Hit done, so I'm going to fix the match on that first movie. And we'll pick this one, there we go. Okay, so now I've loaded two different libraries into my Plex. So basically, I've set up Plex, I've copied my files into media folders, I've created the libraries in Plex, and I'm pretty much ready to test it out now. So there's a couple other things that we're going to need to do. Um, this may not be required in your particular case, but it's required on mine because I'm running multiple Plex servers. So the first thing I want to do is go over to Settings, and I'm going to go over to Remote Access, and I'm going to enable Remote Access. This is where it's going to try to connect and it's going to fail because I haven't created the port forward rules yet. And I'm going to put a maximum of 10 and I'm going to change the port number. Now you don't have to change the port number. The only reason I change mine is because, because again, I'm running two Plex servers and they can't be run on the same port. So because they're two IPs and two separate ports, they kind of integrate nicely. So by putting it on a second port, I can run that second Plex server. For me, it works out well, because then I can actually put the NAS unit to dedicated use, but you don't have to. If you're running only one Plex server, it's going to be on your NAS unit. You can leave it at the 32400 port or change it. It's up to you. Just make sure that if you change it, that it's reflected in your ports forwarding rule in your router. Okay, and then here, I'm going to limit the stream, and this is really up to you. It depends on your bandwidth and everything else, but I really found that most of the time, I can get by with either 720 or 1080p. So we'll do, uh, for purposes of this exercise, we'll do a 720 stream. That gives us more transcoding to do. And I'm gonna go ahead and hit save. Okay, now we can see that we actually have access. Um, it does blink in and out because it's, there's two server ports, but it works perfectly. So unless it's the primary port, you might get the, it's not available for outside network thing. But if you've done your port forwarding in your router, it'll work fine. You don't have this problem if you only have one Plex server. Okay, so now that we've done this, we're now ready to give it a test and see what kind of performance we're going to get from this thing. So before we start actually to actually do some performance tests, there's a couple of things that we want to keep in mind. And you'll see the evidence of it as we actually test. So the amount of streams you get and what you'll be able to do and how smooth the playback will be will be largely depending on a couple things. Number one, what movie type did you start with? For example, did you start with a uncompressed Blu-ray in the MKV package? In which case, transcoding that down to 720 is a lot of work for the computer or for the NAS unit. Um, or did you start with already a pre-compressed or pre-converted 1080p uh, mp4 file so those things you know what you start with will make a big determination of how many streams you can take if you don't care and you only run in one stream no problem you'll see here shortly that 
we can blow through a lot of things, but we'll see the impact of what each one of these does. So before we get started, I noticed there's a server update available, which brings up a point. Often the version that's distributed on the QNAP app store, it could be one or two versions behind. So it's not uncommon that when you install this through the app store, that you'll have to go and update it manually. To update it manually is a little bit different. It's not quite as automatic, but let's walk through it real quick. So I'm gonna go to update, it says download now. And you can see down here, it's downloading a actual QNAP package. And this is actually gonna be in my, right here, in my downloads directory. So now let's go ahead and actually update it. So in order to update our Plex server manually, we're gonna go back to the App Center. We're gonna go up to the corner here where it says install manually. And let's browse to the file, which is It'll be in my downloads folder. We'll click on that update, click open, and click install. Click OK. And it'll take a few minutes to install. It's pretty painless. OK, so it says it's ready to use. Click OK. We'll close this up here. And let's go back to Flex. OK, so now let's do some performance testing and see how that works out. So let's go over to the activity screen. And we'll go over to the dashboard. So what I want to do here is I'm going to actually test a couple different file sizes, uh, both individually and then combined. And the main thing I want to test out is a full Blu-ray uncompressed MKV with a 7.1 soundtrack. And then we'll, or we'll test a, a different file that is a pure MP4 file that's been converted already to a 1080p file for a much smaller, much more efficient streaming. And we'll see the difference and we'll see what happens when I run both. Okay, so what we're looking at here is I'm actually playing a movie from a client directly off the NAS. There is no transcoding whatsoever. It's actually in a, um, using what's called direct stream. So there's no video transcoding. It is transcoding the audio, but it's not transcoding the video because it can play it natively. So if we look at the bandwidth here, since this is playing locally, it has no restrictions. So it's you can see, you can kind of get an example of the bandwidth it's, it's using. And then let's take a look at our CPU. So you can see there was some initial spike, you know, well above 80% total. Uh, most of it's being used by the Plex Media server, but then it kind of lightens up a little bit. So you'll see it go through various cycles if we watch this for a couple of minutes. The punchline is with direct play, you don't get a lot of CPU use. So if you're running direct play around your house because you have Ethernet or you have some really good Wi-Fi connections, you know, bandwidth or is, is not probably going to be a concern. And CPU usage probably won't be a concern for at least a couple streams. So if I switch the quality of the client to 720, 4 megabytes per second, you'll see that the overall CPU usage climbed because it no longer can use direct, direct play. It has to actually transcode. So if we take a look up here, we're seeing it's doing hardware transcoding down to 720p. And of course, it's still transcoding the 7.1 soundtrack. So we're working the device a little bit harder, but as you can see with one movie playing, uh, and this again, this is a not an easy film to play. It's a, this is a full Blu-ray, uncompressed, unmodified, just basically put into an MKV um, container. So not an easy thing to play. The QNAP's doing pretty well with it. So now let's make things a little bit more complicated and let's go ahead and try and add a mobile device to it. So as you can see here, um, I now have a second movie playing in the background and it really hasn't done a whole lot to the cpu and the bandwidth and that's primarily because i'm streaming the second one to it's a regular mp4 file and i'm streaming it to an ipad so the moral of the story here is that the more the lower quality of the stream that you have so if you have a lot of 1080ps that are mp4s you'll be able to stream quite a few of them if you're going to go and do MKVs at full resolution, full for, you know, uh, Blu-ray quality MKVs, you're, unless you're playing directly on a network, you're going to be compressing. And that transcoding can really hit your CPU. If I was to shut down the um, MKV stream right now, you'll, let's see what happens to the CPU. Let's just quickly look down here that we have two movies playing. Both are being transcoded from completely different sources. 
So let's take a look. Going to shut down the first stream. Takes a couple of minutes to actually drop off the activity screen, but you can already see by the performance that the bandwidth has gone down to extremely low since I'm no longer streaming a higher quality film. And you can see the CPUs drop significantly too. So if you get the idea that if you have MP4 files and you do a mild transcode, you can do quite a few streams on here. I don't know if you can get much past five or six with a, a device like this, but you can certainly, it's probably certainly more than enough to, for the average person to be able to utilize for their photos and movie libraries. So that's about it for today's video, and I hope you've enjoyed it. And if you did, please throw it a like. Remember to post any questions or suggestions or ideas for new videos down in the comments. I would love to hear from you. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next video. Thank you.